Hi folks, it's about time we got that sleeper wall finished, so stick around and let's get it built. Well, 10 minutes versus two hours. I'll let you make your own mind up. Well, we're back getting stuck into this oak sleeper wall. This is a whole new corner of the garden which we're recovering from weeds and rubble. And it's a fairly simple build, but I thought I'd go through this one because it's a few things different from previous projects. So all of these sleepers are going on their sides or on their, their thinnest side. And you can see once I've got those steps in, then I could work up to my string line, which I've set as our highest point. That's the top of the top course. So I had to cut in and hack into that fencing a little bit, or the cladding, so I could slot in the sleeper and get a nice tight fit. Most of this was a kind of design as you go type thing. I didn't really think through anything too much and quite often that can work out the best way because you come across all sorts of things that you just wouldn't have thought of if you try and design everything on paper but what I did want to do is get this corner spot on as far as the angles and the joint So this corner is a little bit of a head scratcher simply because we've got a 135 angle here. We did the layout of the posts to allow for that. Now we've done the bit over there. I've run a straight edge along so we've got a continuous line for our second course. And then that allows me to lay the second course on this angle over the top of it and scribe onto this piece before I cut it. And we allowed for 45. We're probably at 46. But we can only go to 45 on the circular saw, so hopefully if we cut it at 45 then we can do a little bit of tweaking and it should all marry up. After coming in from both sides with the circular saw, I needed to tidy up a little bit with the chisel just because these ends are going to be visible, or some of them will be, and then I could start working out how tight these joints are going to be. You can see, instead of just doing a regular mitre where I'm dividing the, the 135 angle by two, I've decided to set the, the actual joins aren't on the apex of the corner, if that's the right terminology. So when these oak um, sleepers shrink, which they will do, that corner will always remain pretty tidy. Otherwise you end up with the, the pair of them kind of pulling apart and you end up with a vertical gap going all the way down the sleepers. This way we can maintain that interlocking design and also know that our corner is always going to end up being solid and unbroken. found these first fixings I was using, even with the pilot hole, they were pushing away on the post, so I needed a couple of clamps just to hold things for the first fixing on each. And by doing the, the middle fixing first, you can then level up and either bring up one end or lower it down 
to make sure you're perfectly level and you're going to end up on the string line. That meant that our mortise and tenon upper step was a little bit high so I did have to bring that down to get it all perfectly flat. At that point I can get rid of that string line because I know our next course is 200mm and it's going to end up where it ends up. I positioned a few just to get a feel for it and just so I could finish the day with knowing that I've got more than just one course of sleepers down and then tidied up a little bit of that cut so I could get that oak all the way in. But that was it, that was it for day one and then I could finish it up the next morning. Right, I'm almost set on the oak construction before we can start filling it and compacting it with the gravel. So I'm going to give you a bit of a run through on that before we skip ahead to the next video where we'll be covering the self-binding gravel and all that sort of thing. So I know I've covered all sorts of ways of building with oak sleepers in the past. Some have been on their sides, you know, on their flat sides. Some have been vertical, etc. So this route is kind of a hybrid. Uh, in the, I've gone on the edges so we're using half the amount of timber which means they can get more height it's not really retaining much um, at all bearing in mind this is raised ground anyway what I have got which is a bit different is these posts are actually on the outside of the oak so ordinarily if you're doing a raised bed or something you'd probably put these on the inside so you didn't see them um, but because we're planting this up anyway with hedging or, or shrubs or whatever up to a decent height these won't really be visible and I think there's a lot more strength in the fact that they're on the outside of the oak sleepers. That said, the way we've interlocked the sleepers and bolted everything in, they're not really doing a huge 
structural job anymore. They were simply there for location to start with. Um, but that's why they're on the outside. Now, as far as the fixings go, I've used two different types simply because that's what I had in the workshop. I had some eight mil uh, landscaping screws, which are these guys here. Now these are much more heavy duty. I'd say they're called forge fast and they were okay. But to be quite honest, I don't know if it's the thread or the fact that they were just quite big. Uh, they didn't pull in and clamp as tight as these ones. And I think these might have been Timco, I'm not sure, but they're stainless steel as well, which is great with oak. But to be quite honest, um, the strength here is really coming from both the interlocking sleepers and the fact that they're on the inside of the posts. So even if all those failed in 10 years time, it's not really gonna go anywhere. Now, steps, we did two steps. We've got one here and we got one there. If you saw the video beforehand, that's the mortise and tenon one, which was a long winded way of building things. This one has got four of those big landscaping screws screwed in here. Yes, they go straight into the end grainer there, but end grain of oak, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And then I've counter or, or pre-drilled these so I can stick a 25 mil oak dowel in there and pretend it's all traditional joinery. Now everything here is sat on type one and gravel. Um, type one is okay, but gravel that's free drain is even better. So that's all compacted down and these are sat onto it. Uh, things might settle a little bit over time, uh, but it means that we've got no soil contact anywhere along here. Also, this geotextile, um, this is, uh, I'll maybe cover this in a different video, but this is a non-woven geotextile. So this is usually used below your sub base um, and that stops any kind of bits of aggregate or if you had some rubble and stuff from pushing down and sinking into the soil below over time. So it's really good at stabilizing. But by putting that in first, then putting our sleepers in and then I folded it back over the top to work on the other side it means that one we haven't got any chance of weeds kind of getting through very easily and also it means we've got no soil coming up from underneath or on the back side and I'll show you how I've done that. Now the benefit of going that way is it comes underneath the bottom sleeper then it comes up the face of the sleeper and across the top and then we're going to be putting our type one on top of here. Now by doing that, I can actually backfill with clean gravel. Type one is okay, but because it's got all the fines and stuff in it, it can stay damp and kind of just hold moisture in against the oak, which is okay, it's better than soil, but by having the membrane come up, it means soil won't wash through it and clog this up over time, but this is really freely draining. And I mean, actually, let's, let's stick a hose in here and see if it is actually free draining. I mean, I'm actually planning on the fall going towards that wall to control the rainwater anyway, but if we bring a load of water in here, we'll see how long and if it comes out. There you go. So you can see it's coming through. So we, we know it's pretty, that was pretty quick coming through. It's not like it was soil and it's gonna take hours and hours to get through, um, you know, 20 seconds for it to filter down through, all the way down the back and all the way through the bottom. Anyway, that's point proven, I guess. Um, so over the top of this, we're looking to put our type one in and that will be about probably 50 mil, 75 mil over the whole thing. Of course, it's a bit deeper here to build up. I'm probably coming up to about here uh, and then on top of that, we're going to then install about 50 mil of self-binding gravel. So we should end up with a nice lip all the way around of oak. It's not just going to, it's not going to be coming up level. And this is the Morton tenon step. So it's pegged. I put two pegs in more for aesthetics than anything, but that's got a tenon in there. And again, this is sort of anchored in here onto at the corner post as are these. So it's kind of locating those. Um, what you can do if you wanted to hide the post is extend this like I did on the other step in further and then you put your post in that corner and bolt in that way but I'm happy for it to be here and what I might do in the future is install like a newel post here probably be able to bolt it into there and here and you know if we had some rope fencing or something along here um, with a light I don't know thinking out loud but we've got potential to do that so again this needs to be 
back filled with type one and I don't know if I'm gonna put gravel in here or maybe cut some limestone slabs to sit in this gap. Anyway, I think that's it from the oak sleeper perspective. That's how we're looking. So the next video will be more lifting and shifting to get all the type one down and then move on to that gravel. So thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time. And remember to check out all the other oak sleeper builds which I'll stick here and here and here.